My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hey, my name is Austin Hare. I'm tuning in from Orlando, Florida. All right, Florida. It's a cool place to be at. So listen, what's the difference between who should call themselves entrepreneur and who should call themselves a businessman? Yeah, that's a good like question. We're changing the... the we're, we're, we're using them, but sometimes I like to get the differentiation between both. Yeah, I mean, originally when Entrepreneur was created, it actually had a negative connotation. Um, it was people who were doing things that were way against the grain. And so I think now it's gone the other way and people are coveting the title so much that they're stretching what the true definition is because, you know, I've heard people who want to go open a franchise and they call themselves an entrepreneur. And really, you know, opening a franchise, somebody's already done the work and they've already kind of paved the way. And so I think that an entrepreneur is somebody who is creating a new type of business. You know what I mean? Something like totally new. I think there's different levels of it. Like um, a true, like at the highest level, they're, they're, it's a totally new genre, a totally new category, right? And then as you get on down, it could also just be opening up your own business and adding your own spin to it. But I feel like when someone back in the days, 10, 15 years ago, would have called themselves an, a businessman, they actually had to have a business, all of that stuff. Now I think uh, a, an 18-year-old with some type of an online business calls themselves an entrepreneur and a businessman too. So it's kind of one of those mm -hmm. things I feel like a lot of the older generation, they take it very offensive. They're like, hold on. You had to have, like before they had to have like 10, 15 years of experience before they allowed themselves, called themselves a businessman. They had to have the success or else they just wouldn't mention it. But now everybody on their Instagram bio says entrepreneur. So, I know, yeah. It's totally taken away the the clout that it had because everybody's throwing around the term, you know, and it's and you can, there's no police that are going to tell you, oh no, you're not an entrepreneur. <laughs> so yeah, I agree. Like when I say entrepreneur, I, I, I think it's kind of cool, right? Like that they're, trying to step out but to me all it signifies is um their intent it doesn't really signify what they've done it doesn't really signify accomplishment it just means they are you know it's more like i'm intending to be an entrepreneur these days unless they really have like a legitimate track record of success in business i agree with that now let's talk about the self-development part two questions one i want to know what you do for your self-development number two what is definition of self-development for you so I first got turned on to self-development when I was 17. My dad gave me a tape called The Pow Psychology of Winning by Dennis Wheatley. And that was the first time I'd ever heard about any of this, of anybody telling me how to make my life better. And I was driven. I was always driven. I was a professional wakeboarder, professional athlete for a long time. And then learning the psychology behind it was intriguing to me. That led me to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. Um, that was a huge one for me. Even Tim Ferriss, the four-hour work week, that was another pivotal moment. I don't think like that you can actually do four hours, I, you know, I, I think you're gonna get ran over, but just the process, the, the concept of like, okay, making your time count. Don't just be busy for the sake of being busy. You know, that's a really great principle from that book. Um, like in order to, so that you can do more, not so that you can do less. That was like, his thing was like, hey, make your time more productive so you can do less. But Tim Ferriss is one of the busiest guys, <laughs> hardest working guys there is. So he doesn't even follow that advice. Uh, lately, I got into Tony Robbins a lot. Um, Alex Sharpin and um, Darren Hardy. I watched like a, his Darren Daily. So, and then to answer your second question, um, what is self development? I think it's just anything that is that you can learn that is going to like increase. I think it's a lot like education. You know, um, it's just not in a not in like some um, mathematical or or, or is, like scholarly subject, but it's education in how to make your quality of life better. So here's, here's my question. A lot of individuals, when we go to school, obviously they don't talk about self-development much. Hopefully lately they would catch the trend and they'll do it. I know there are some teachers that are pivoting towards that where they're like, okay, this stuff is cool. People are making millions of dollars based on learning these concepts. Let me teach some, at least bring familiarity and, and bring a little bit of a light to what these things are. So I have seen that. But the number definitely needs to be a lot more higher. Couple of couple of teachers in the LAUSD district ain't gonna do any damage. But it's at least is is getting there. My question is this: If somebody is transitioning from a nine to five job, or they like to be an entrepreneur or business owner in the future, they're striving to do that. What are a couple of tips that you could give to those people? 
Well, yeah, I think it largely depends on what industry you're in. For, um, but, you know, in terms of transitioning from that, um, that nine to five to being like having your own business, I mean, there's, I think that it's okay to start like there's a lot of um, hype around the side hustle right now. And I don't think that like a side hustle is the answer. I think that a side hustle is the next step, you know? And so I own several gyms for um, a long time. And I see the path that a lot of people took to that was, you know, they had their job, they're doing whatever. And then they got into working out. And then it's like, all of a sudden their friends would ask them, Hey, you're really fit. Can you show me how to work out? And you're doing it for free for your friends. Right. And then um, the next step is like, well, you know, this kind of sucks. Like I, all my friends are asking for this. Like, why don't I charge them something for this? And then you charge a little bit of money for it. And then that segues into like, wow, like this, um, I, I could, instead of doing this one-on-one -on -one for everybody, I could make these templates and I could charge the same amount and just do the work one time, right? And then it starts to get more busy. And it's like, wow, instead of me being the one training these people, I could hire somebody to train these people, right? And then it's like, instead of me paying for this little space, I could rent my own space. And so there's kind of like a transition where all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but over time, you had transitioned to being just somebody who loves fitness to being a gym owner, where now you are overseeing other people doing the, the steps that you were doing at first. So it's like, there, you know, you, I, you always have to do like the core elements of the business, the core elements of the business always have to be fulfilled, but you don't have to be the one doing that. So you can start doing those core things that are necessary. And then as you, as you grow, you might hire that to somebody else so that you can work on the next step, right? And then as you grow, you hire that to somebody else and you can work on the next step and you can keep growing and growing that way. But it's important to make sure that your those core elements of the business, as you grow, you don't forget about them. They, somebody has a responsibility of getting those done. So I hope that kind of helps answer that question. No, definitely. Side hustle is cool, but side hustle is not a career and it's not a, it's not a business that you'll do for a long period of time. I think the minute that you call it a hustle, it's got to be a career. It's got to be something that you want to do. Later. So somebody, if somebody asks you, well, as an entrepreneur, as a, as a businessman, as someone who's had a lot of experience, what happens when you get a negative thought? What if things are not working out? How do you overcome that? What do you do? That's good. Yeah, that's a good question. Because I mean, and this, this is something I still struggle with because, you know, the human brain, whenever we hear something negative, we process that, we internalize that exponentially more than when we hear something positive. So like, even if you hear an equal number of positive and negative comments, or you have an equal number of positive and negative thoughts, the negative are going to manifest themselves a lot more. And you have to be on guard against that from letting that happen. So, um, you know, I think understanding, like, there is a lot of negativity, that's just gonna, I mean, that's just the world, that's just people, right, there's gonna be adversity, and having that baseline that, okay, like, when things are good, and when things are smooth sailing, that's not normal, okay, that's what we strive for, that's what we think normal is, but what's normal is when your life is just going like this, up and down and up and down, and so coming in with that understanding, like, okay, it's gonna be crazy, there's gonna be a lot of negativity, but I'm, I'm doing this for those moments when it is calm and tranquil, so that I can relish in those, and I, and I can, um, you know, appreciate those moments that have happened. So, and then further, like, um, whenever there's a negative thought, like, do you, are you familiar with Tony Robbins priming exercises? A little bit, but I'm a big fan of thinking glory. So I do more Bob Proctor, Tony Robbins. And I tell you, there is specific trainings that I have gotten from Tony Robbins materials online that he's got that, that helps a lot. But overall, I think Tony just goes too fast for me. I think it's, yeah. I don't observe things as fast as he does. I'm low IQ. So I like <laughs> to go with Bob Proctor and thinking go rich just because I can go slower. That's it. But, but go ahead and share with everybody. So if anybody doesn't know, they'll get yeah, to know. So he's got a really great technique called priming. And what that is, is a, it's kind of like a 10 minute morning routine, but really you can do it whenever you want, whenever you're feeling angry, whenever you're feeling frustrated, whenever something negative happens. And the concept is it, you reframe, right? So it's like, stop everything you're doing, slow down, catch your breath. And then the first part is focusing on things that you're grateful for. So right in the middle of any negativity, and this is it's difficult because your brain is trying to put, solve these problems. So you have to make a conscious switch, a conscious shift, but it's focusing on the positive things, right? So in, in particular, three things. So pick three things that you can be very grateful for in your life, whether they were achieved, whether they were lucky, whatever, right? But just three super important things um, that could be big, it could be small, something that brings a smile to your face, something that makes you feel accomplished. And you dwell on those for a minute each or thereabouts. It could be more, it could be less. But just three minutes of thinking about gratitude. And then you, you switch, you transition into thinking about three things that you want to accomplish, right? And so what you're doing is you're using that um, the endorphins that are released from 
a chemical like in your brain that is activated when you think about something that you've accomplished and you're thinking about something you want to accomplish and you're using those same endorphins, those same chemicals to wrap around those feelings of something that is in the future. And so it kind of tricks you into feeling like you've already accomplished it, right? And so you can, even though, even though you're in the process of it, even though you haven't accomplished it yet, you can still get the same feelings of having accomplished it using this process. So it's three minutes spent on things that you've already accomplished, that you're thankful for, that you're grateful for. And then it's three minutes thinking about three different things that you want to accomplish, either right now, 10 years from now, or the next 10 minutes. And um, it's a really great way to pivot from negative to positive. I love it. Austin, how do people find you? Um, you can just find me. My Instagram handle is Austin Hare. Uh, on Facebook, I'm Austin Hare. Um, you know, we, we started a, the reason what I've been doing is we started a university for commercial real estate, particularly for healthcare. Um, but healthcare can mean, you know, chiropractor, uh, veterinarian, but then of course you have urgent care, family medicine, dental, um, opto uh, optometry, uh, dermatology, right? And then there's a lot of good principles that we talk about just in terms of like how to um, invest in real estate, how to think about investing in real estate, um, regardless of if you have your healthcare or not. And so that's called Real Estate uh, Secrets for Healthcare on, we have a podcast about that too. So my Instagram handle is Austin Hare. And then you can find us on, on the podcast too. So we're just trying to empower people with a lot of education in the commercial real estate realm right now. Love it. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this busy time out of your schedule and being with us. Hopefully we'll be able to do more. Yeah, it was great, man. Yeah, anytime. Done deal. Stay safe in Florida. Talk to you soon. Okay, you too, man. Bye-bye.